Hi, I'm Lois Vogel Shaw. Today's August 27th, 2021. And um, I have no idea what's going to happen on this video, except that I got this morning the words, the fire. And um, I did a little bit of a study on it where it talks about that with the Holy Spirit. And I, I never realized this. I mean, I've read this over many times, but I never realized that John the Baptist was the one that kept telling the people that I'll baptize you with water, but when the Lord comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, he said. If you want to look that up, it's in Matthew 3.11. And it's also in Luke 3.16. Let me just say a quick prayer before I go any further. Father, we come to you. I ask you that we get this. We understand this. We realize who we are. We come against all the evil going on in Yeshua's name. We come against the coronavirus in Yeshua's name. We come against abortion, Roe versus Wade in Yeshua's name. We come against this government takeover in Yeshua's name. So I want to talk about the fire because we really don't get this. And if you get this, it will change your life forever. Absolutely. Because Jesus came into the world. He died on the cross to set us free from our sin so that we could be baptized with the Holy Spirit with the power and the fire, all right? The power, we, we can understand what power is, but do we, do, we, do we really understand what it means by the fire? Why would John the Baptist say he was going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire? Why is the word power and fire added on to that? The word power or the word fire, either or. They kind of go together, power and fire. They're two words that are used in representation with what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Let me just give you a little understanding, all right? The Greek word fire is called pur. That's the, the pronunciation of it, pur. But it means lightning, fiery, fire. We know what lightning does. We know it strikes something and poof. It'll, it'll consume it. It'll crack a tree right in half. We, we understand that there's power with fire. What is fire? All right. It's an active principle of burning or some kind of a combustion. It's a fiery display, flashing light. What does fire do? It consumes what goes on fire. And why does it consume it? What happens when it consumes it? It destroys it. It devours it. All right? It's a form of destruction, utter destruction. Fire represents destruction of something. So when the Bible tells us that he's going to baptize, baptize us with the Holy Spirit and, and, and the fire... That means that's something added to it. That means when we operate in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, they're one and the same because ghost means spirit. It's something you don't see with your natural eyes, but it's real. It's a spirit. He's a spirit being. He's a person, a spirit person, part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, fire comes, power comes. So when you rebuke something in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, all right, it gets consumed. When it's directed in the right direction at evil, it should never be directed at a person who's another Christian. We don't rebuke each other ever. Ever. What we rebuke is the spirit that might be behind something, that might be influencing someone that you love. You never rebuke a person. 
God's the only one that has the right to judge somebody that way, and he will ultimately choose who goes to hell. You don't go to hell. If Jesus is the Lord of your life and you accepted his sacrifice for you on the cross, setting you free from your sins, but it doesn't give you license to go and live any kind of lifestyle you want. People think they have a ticket into heaven by just believing that Jesus died on that cross. No, because then what you make, you're, you're making light of what he suffered for you. When you accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, you become a follower of Jesus. That's why there are many people that say they're believers of Jesus, but they're living for the devil. Our president right now claims he's a Catholic, but he's for abortion. He's a liar, a deceiver, cheated their way in to the White House. <laughs> That's not how a Christian lives their life. Christians don't go murdering their babies just because it's an inconvenience for you. Deal with it. If you got pregnant and you didn't want to get pregnant, you should have thought about that before you performed the act, which creates pregnancy. But once you're pregnant, you're not just dealing with your own body. You're dealing with another body inside your body. Therefore, you're responsible for that child who is also part of you. So when you're destroying your baby by an abortion, you're destroying part of yourself a creation of yourself coming into the world, which, which by the way, is a blessing from God because he told us to be fruitful and multiply. That's what we're supposed to do. And what they're doing in the world right now with this virus and this coronavirus supposed shot is they're destroying the population of the world. See, instead of trusting God with it all, man has stepped into the picture and decided to do some kind of a population control because they're panicking that there's going to be too many people and famine is coming. That's all coming because of the judgment of God, not global warming, folks. If global warming is really happening, it's happening because it's meant to happen. Just like all the weather phenomena that's out there right now, it's meant to happen. We're in a time frame of the judgment of the Father on the earth for the earth's indignation and for all the aborted babies and the martyring of the saints of God. Nobody has the right to just murder somebody because they believe different than, they, than you do. The creation is trying to become the creator, which is what Lucifer did. And we all know what happened to him. He got hurled out of heaven by Michael. But he's roaming about seeking whom he may devour. We have the Holy Spirit, which is love. And again, all the fruits of the Spirit. We operate in that and leading people to Jesus, who is love. But we have been given the Spirit and the fire. The fire, which means there's an anointing that comes out when you pray, when you're operating in the Spirit of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit permeates out of us and consumes what's ever in its path. Whether it's sickness, disease, evil taking over the, the United States of America. We're battling this, and most people are Christians that are coming against this and rising up. But we have to now bring the fire into it. We have to bring the Holy Spirit into it. We have to bring prayer and fasting into it. We have to use every weapon of our warfare that we absolutely have in order to win and get America back where she belongs. No matter what situation you're in, victory only comes when you're using all the weapons of your warfare and you're operating in the power and the fire of God. You can't rebuke Satan in your flesh. You can scream all day long at him, and he's going nowhere. He's just going to laugh at you. But when he sees the fire of God in you, that passion coming from you, that's when he runs. Because he doesn't want to deal with it. Because he knows it will consume him. It's like when you're casting out a demon. 
and I've cast out demons in my life. When you cast out a demon and you say the name of Jesus, they scream. They have to get away from it. It consumes them. That's how they, why they vacate. There's a fire that comes when you know it. But the fire only comes when you accept it and believe it. The word power, okay, in the Bible, in, in the book of Acts 1.8, it says, Jesus says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive power, 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 power. That word, if you look it up, is dunamis. Dunamis, almost like dynamite. Again, relating to a fire type situation, a blowing up and exploding, consuming destruction of what, what's ever in its path. Wherever you put dynamite, that's what's going to blow up when you light the fire on it. Dunamis means miraculous power, abilities, strengths, mighty, mighty deeds. What did the disciples do? They did mighty deeds, did they not? That's the former rain. What does it say about the latter rain? The latter rain will be greater than the former rain. We're in the latter rain. How do you know that, Lois? Because all the signs are showing us. You cannot deny what's going on in the world. We're in a time like never before. And even in the United States of America, there was a power grab by the enemy so that America will never again be free. And most people are ignorant and don't even get it. Just like most of you were ignorant to the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about it. I don't know how many people are even talking about it these days. They talk more about earthquakes and this and that and everything that's going to happen. And you're learning nothing about the Bible, the word of how we're supposed to operate as the children of Almighty God. It's key that we operate with this fire. And everybody that's involved in this election fraud... You have to pull in the spiritual side. We have to start getting together in groups and praying and fasting and rebuking in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus. So the fire can consume evil and stop it. We can't win this fight in our natural. Every war that was ever won, there was always supernatural power from God that intervened. In the Battle of the Bulge, when the Lord showed me that, I got that word from the Father. I didn't even know what the Battle of the Bulge was all about. I had heard of it from school. But then I looked it up and I realized that the enemy walked right into the camp in disguise and was killing the Americans. And they couldn't get out there because of the fog and the, and the cold and the rainy weather. They couldn't go save the Americans that were in a position where they were trapped until a prayer was brought forth and distributed amongst all the men. As a matter of fact, somebody a while back sent me the card of it, of that actual prayer, and I've read it before, that they prayed for God to let them see clearly so they could do what they had to do. And after the prayer was said, God lifted the fog. He lifted whatever was blocking the way. And they went and they were able to save their people. It's the same thing in this. We have things blocking our way from victory against this election fraud. And from victory in many things in your own personal lives. There are demonic forces that are trying to block the way. And there's only one thing that's going to move a demonic force. It's not a human being. You can't pick up a sword in the natural realm and start cutting down demons. They're spirit beings, and a sword will go right through them. But if you take this sword, the word of God, which is the spiritual sword, and you start rebuking them in Jesus Yeshua's name, that's a sword that can cut through them, and it will cut through them. And they will be stopped and silenced in their attacks on this country. You see, there are countries that accept Antichrist. We don't accept Antichrist in this country. Oh, some do. 
And many do in ignorance because they don't get it. They don't realize that Biden is operating for Antichrist. Do you realize that Biden, our president, or, well, not really our president, is operating for Antichrist? If you don't see that in him, you're blind. If you can't see what this man is allowing to happen in this country, he shut the pipeline down, canceled all kinds of jobs. People commit suicide because of it. There was no reason to shut that down. They want the new Green Deal. Well, then wait till that's all set in motion. Just don't shut jobs down like that. Why would he open the borders in the middle of a pandemic? Tell me, would anybody in their right mind do such a thing? Why would he pull the troops out of Afghanistan and leave all our military equipment there? For the Taliban to walk in and just take it over and leave all our people over there and get out the Afghanistanians first before our own people. Why would he do that and fly them to America? For what reason? Because they want to take over. Satan wants to take over the world and he's using all kinds of people. He used Hitler many years ago, but it flopped, didn't it? You know what the father said to me every time he rises up? He will fail. When Antichrist rises up, he's going to fail too. Oh, he'll get so far. He will martyr people and destroy people and take over certain countries. He will obtain some sort of a goal. But he will be ultimately destroyed because Antichrist goes to hell. And what they're trying to do in America is they cheated to get in and they're looking to seal the deal that the other side can never get in again. They have the news media under control where they're not saying certain things. If half the country would have heard the truth about Biden and his son and their buddy buddies with China and all these things, they probably wouldn't have voted for the man. If they would have seen how badly his mind was functioning and something, some senility or something's going on there, the seriousness of that, they might not have voted him in either. But the news media, they're the liars. They're on the side of evil too. Because you can't speak lies and be on the side of God. Let's say that again. You can't be a liar and be on the side of the Father. It doesn't work. Truth is truth and lies are lies. And if we don't see the truth, which the Holy Spirit leads us to all truth, we have nothing, 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 nothing. My job, my purpose, is to speak truth and for you to hear truth and for you to learn the truth about the Bible and understand who you are and get the fire in your life. I pray for the fire to come upon everybody. This video needs to get out everywhere. It's going to be called The Fire. Have enough guts to send it out so people can hear about the Holy Spirit. This is the time of the Holy Spirit now in the world. Jesus did what he had to do. He gave us the Holy Spirit so we can do what we have to do. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit. We don't have power to do it without the Holy Spirit. We need his power and his fire and his truth, and all his gifts so we can discern evil and good and understand. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to rise up in the people and baptize them with your power and your fire. Consume their being with who you are, with your love, your joy, your peace, your faith, your patience, all these things you have, humility. All these fruits of the Spirit there are fruits of the Spirit, which is personality. Then there's gifts of the Spirit, which is all the supernatural manifestations of things that happen. Prophecy is a manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. The ministry of being a prophet is an administrative position that some have. Teachers, preachers, apostles, and all the gifts operate. What are you doing in your life? Are you walking in the Spirit? Have you allowed Him to baptize you today? 
If you don't know Jesus, it's time to accept him as the Lord of your life. And if you did accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, it's time to get baptized with his power, the fire, the dunamis, dynamite power. It comes supernaturally. It moves supernaturally. It has nothing to do with your flesh. But he will move you to do what you need to do when you let him. But you have to let him. We need to get out everywhere we can. I need to get out everywhere I can so people can hear these messages. The Lord will open up doors where I can get interviewed so it can get out there other places that people will listen. It's time. Esther is rising up to bring healing to America and the world and to come against the cartel without fear and trembling, with power and with fire. You've got to do it with the fire of God. It's his power and his fire that operates through us and we are the ones that project it towards evil. Let's all lift our hands up right now in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, and submit that fire towards the evil in our world. It's not just America, it's everywhere. Whatever country you're from that you watch my videos, wherever you are, put your hand up and declare the fire of God to enter into the situations of evil that are going on throughout the world and the United States so that justice can be done. We come against the martyring of the saints. Protect your people, Father, wherever they may be. We know, though, that biblically it will happen in places. So they are called the martyrs, and they will go down in history as the martyrs that stood for the namesake of Jesus, Yeshua. Operate with the fire of God and be baptized. I pray for you to be baptized right now with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Well, I can't get tongues, Lois. It won't happen for me. Oh, yes, it will. You have to let it happen. The Holy Spirit is not holding it back from you. We hold it back because it's, it's just a little bit like so supernatural to us that it gets us nervous. And then when it starts to come out of our mouth, we just close it off because we feel just silly about it. Sometimes it sounds like babble. You don't understand it. So you think to yourself, well, that's not tongues. Yeah, it is. Whatever starts to come out of your mouth when you're praising the Lord and worshiping him is tongues. Unless you're walking with the devil. Because he has a, a, a false tongue. He always tries to mimic God in different ways. If you have the Holy Spirit and you love Jesus and accepted him as the Lord of your life, you will be baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I don't care what the churches say. Churches say there are no prophets of today. There's no tongues for today. All the gifts petered out with Peter, they are dead wrong. And I am an example of that being wrong. I've had every gift operate in my life. I've seen death to life many times in my life. I've seen miracles happen through the name of Jesus. I received tongues when I didn't even know what tongues was, proving to me that it was real. It's real. It's more real than we are because we're in flesh bodies. And this is a whole spiritual realm that will never end. It will never end. So, are you with me today in raising our hands with the fire of God and consuming the evil that's taking over everywhere? In the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus. We rebuke evil that is trying to take over the world. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua. And we call the fire to do it from God our Father, our Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, who is fire, to stop evil and bring things back to the way they need to be. Now, we know we're in the end times and we know things are going to play out, but there are certain things that will stop. Bam! 
from prayers like that, you will see things play out in America for this country to come back the way it is. They're rising up everywhere. I'm going to be speaking in different places. I'm going to be being interviewed by people, all right? I'm going to be on, I just wrote to my brother Drew again, all right? The Wild West Crypto Show guys, the Cowboys. Hallelujah to the Cowboys in Texas, all right? That are out there going everywhere with the word of the living God and bringing things out. Hallelujah to Mike Lindell and Brother Brannon and Sidney Powell and President Trump and all these people on the front line. General Flynn. These are our heroes. Anybody that has enough guts to stand up and fight the good fight of faith. We're all saints of God. And we all need to do our part. Whether it's praying on your knees every day, fasting, whatever you can do. Whatever the, sp whatever the spirit moves you to do. Don't do anything in the flesh. Because in the flesh it means nothing. It's the same when you give. Do it by the move of God because that's when you get blessed. He blesses us when we obey him. So I'm Lois Vogel Sharp, and I'll be back when he sends me back again, and have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.